In February of 2015, my wife and I discovered we were going to be parents. And we could not have been more excited. We were a little scared because we were also in the process of moving to a different country. But my wife, being the incredibly brave and fearless woman she is, was taking all of those transitions and changes head on. That coming May, Mother's Day was approaching and even though our son wasn't with us yet, I really wanted to get my wife a Mother's Day gift. Since we were in the process of moving, having yet another thing to take with us just would have been inconvenient. And I just got her a card and wrote something in it. That card would be the only Mother's Day gift Allison would ever receive. In just a few weeks, Allison would find out she had acute myeloid leukemia and the severity of her disease required a very aggressive treatment that unquestionably would have killed our unborn son. And Allison was faced with the decision to either abort our child to get the treatment she needed to save her life or wait. And Allison chose to wait so our unborn son could grow and develop more and have a chance at living. You can say that she was motivated by religious beliefs or personal ideologies, but she was motivated by the love for her son. She wanted him to live, to have a chance at life, even at the risk of her own, because she loved him more than her life. And so she decided to postpone her treatment, to give him time to be born and be born healthy, Today, he is about nine months old and doing amazing. But that choice would cost Allison her life just six weeks after Judah, our son, was born. And it breaks my heart that the most selfless mother that I have ever known will never hear her son saying, Mommy, that she never got to experience a Mother's Day with her son in her arms that her only Mother's Day gift was a card. But in that card, I said something very heartfelt that I want to share with you now. It says, to my wife, first we had each other, and then we had a family. Allison, I know little Judah has not arrived just yet, but even so, I feel like the three of us are already a family. We are certainly beginning many journeys, the journey of parenthood, the journey of a new home, the journey of new jobs in a new country, most of all, a journey of the unknown and complete mystery. The last 10 years with you have been the most joyful and adventurous of my life. And now we get to experience several new adventures simultaneously together. Know that you have been a best friend, a companion in all things, a wonderful life, a noteworthy partner in business, a lovely Christian, passionate person, and a brave and inspiring adventurer to me. Now you are the mother of our son. You are full of so many prestigious titles, my love. Out of all the new frontiers we are about to venture into, none excite me more than being parents and raising our child together. I am so, so proud of you, my brave one, and I am so excited to see the mother you'll become. While there are many uncertainties ahead, one thing I know is that we will always have joy and comfort in the company of being a family together. I love you beyond words. Happy first Mother's Day, Allison, your husband and friend, Joshua. That was about a year ago. And this Mother's Day, she'll have been gone for about eight months. When our son was hospitalized, Allison and I got an iPod and we made several recordings of us reading stories, children's stories, and praying and singing. And we would put that iPod with Judah in the NICU so he could hear our voices even when he was asleep. And now with Judah, I, he can still hear his mother's voice. He can still hear her talking to him. And with all these video blogs that we've made over the years, it's 
filmmakers. I'm so grateful that I have these ways that Judah can still get to know her. There was one story in particular that Allison was so looking forward to reading to Judah over and over again, and that she read on one of these recordings. A story that is very simple, but accompanied by an undeniable grace and love, especially with her gone now. This is her reading that story to our son. This is my little golden book about God. God is great. Look at the stars in the evening sky, so many millions of miles away, that the light you see shining left its star long, long years before you were born. Yet even beyond the farthest star, God knows the way. Think of the snow-capped mountain peaks. Those peaks were crumbling away with age before the first men lived on earth. Yet when they were raised up sharp and new, God was there too. Bend down to touch the smallest flower. Watch the busy ant tugging at his load. See the flash of jewels on the insect's back. The tiny world your two hands could span, like the oceans and mountains and far-off stars God planned. Think of our earth spinning in space, so that now for a day of play and work we face the sunlight. Then we turn away to the still soft darkness for rest and sleep. This too is God's doing, for God is good. God gives us everything we need, shelter from cold and wind and rain, clothes to wear, food to eat. God gives us flowers, the songs of birds, the laughter of brooks, the deep song of the sea. He sends the sunshine to make things grow, sends in its turn the needed rain. God makes us grow too, with minds and eyes to look around our wonderful world, to see its beauty, to feel its might. He gives us a still small voice in our hearts to help us tell wrong from right. God gives us hopes and wishes and dreams, plans for our grown-ups years ahead. He gives us memories of yesterdays so that happy times and people we love, we can keep with us always in our hearts. For God is love. God is the love of our mother's kiss, the warm, strong hug of our daddy's arms. God is in all the love we feel for playmates, and family and friends. When we're hurt or sorry or lonely or sad, if we think of God, he is with us there. God whispers to us in our hearts, do not fear, I am here. And I love you, my dear. Close your eyes and sleep tight for tomorrow will be bright. All is well, dear child. Good night. In 2013, about two years before Allison was pregnant with our son, she was pregnant with our daughter, and we lost her to a miscarriage. And it's strange to think, but I do believe this, that Allison is in heaven with our daughter, and I am here with our son. And I undoubtedly believe the four of us will see each other one day. But until then, Allison, you are the most brave, fearless, selfless, graceful person and mom I have ever known. And I will be telling Judah about your love for him every day of his life. But on Mother's Day, especially Mother's Day, we will celebrate your bravery and the victory that you accomplished and saving our son. You are so amazing, my love. And while we are so, so sad that you are not with us, I have you in Judah. I have a piece of you with me. I already see your expressions come alive in Judah's face. I see you in his eyes and some of his mannerisms that are already being revealed in that personality that's becoming so, so much more alive every day. And I am so, so grateful that Judah had you as his mommy. And even though you're not with us, you will always be Judah's mommy. I love you, Allison. 
I love you, Allison. I miss you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>